Good morning, ma'am. Good morning, ma'am. Good morning, everyone. Today, as it is Odisha Day, we will be learning about some of the cultures of Odisha and how it is unique to the cultures we have in Maharashtra. Does anyone know what a culture is? Um, may I? Yes, go ahead. Yes, ma'am. Culture is the ideas, arts, and other custom of a particular group of people or society. Am I right? Yes, very good, Giridesh. Let's look into our first cultural study today, starting off with cuisines of Odisha. Hello, everyone. Today, me and my group, consisting of Riya, Dharmishtha, Arush, Manushri, and me, Avni, will be taking you through a couple of Odia and Maharashtrian cuisines. So, please do enjoy this video. So, first up, we will be welcomed by a very delicious khaja recipe, which is demonstrated by Riya. Hi, my name is Riya, and I study in 9th A Pawar Public School. So today I am going to share a Odia style crispy khaja recipe here. So let's get started. It's a simple. It's simple to make, but a little hard work required for it. So it's a long process. So let's get started. So for that I have taken maida, then salt, oil. one roti and then I have greased roti with oil and corn flour and then I'll put another roti on it and I'll repeat the process so here I've greased oil and corn flour on one roti and place another roti on top of it so repeat the same process now I'm going to roll it tightly oil to seal the edges after this I'm I'm going to cut it into pieces you can also use a knife for cutting I'll just tell you this that this recipe needs patience and a little hard work Você 
the pan oil to fry. I will fry till it become golden brown. It becomes golden brown and let me tell you that this crispy and juicy khaja recipe is a special treat for this Diwali. So do try it and I will immediately put it in the sugar syrup. this it's looking yummy right so these are some pictures thank you next we will be seeing arush making poha poha is one of maharashtra's most popular breakfast dishes it is quick and easy to make this dish is not only liked by maharashtrian people but also non maharashtrians like this dish poha is flattened rice that is steam cooked with onions spices and herbs the word poha refers to flattened rice itself and as well the dish made with it so to make this uh, we have to first of all we have to wash uh, wash and dry wash the dry poha with water and put it in a strainer then in a kadai we will add oil and once the oil is heated we will put some cumin in marathi we call it jeera then mustard seeds that means mohri and then curry leaves that means kadi patta and ground nut in marathi we call it shingdana and this process is called forni dene in marathi okay so after this process we will add chopped onion once the onions are golden brown we we will add turmeric powder or you can say haldi and salt and then we will add the poha then we have to mix it and we have to let it steam for 1 to 2 minutes and add, then then your poha is done then you can garnish it with coriander leaves or grated coconut thank you Now we will see how gupchup are made which will be demonstrated by Dhamishtha Namaskar good morning mora naam hai Dhamishtha today i am telling you some facts about gupchup in a language gupchup is called as pani puri and in odisha it is called as pani puri it is called as gupchup every one of you have eaten gupchup in this street uh, and making it by and making at home so let's get started for puri i have taken the ready made puri packet you can make it at home or you can buy a packet of puri ready made packet of puris now let's make the second thing second thing is tikha pani for tikha pani i have taken fresh coriander mint leaves green chilies ginger Water, black salt, salt, roasted cumin powder, pepper powder, red chili powder, and lemon juice. And take grind and take mixture and grinding jar. In grinding jar, put some fresh coriander, mint leaves, green chilies, ginger, and water, and grind them. After grinding, take the puree in one bowl and add. One liter of water. After adding one liter of order, a uh, water, add little bit black salt, salt, roasted cumin powder, pepper powder, red chili powder, and lemon juice. And you can for decorating, you can add some bundi salt. If you don't want, you can skip this uh, item also. For third item, we will make mitha pani. For mitha pani. I have soaked seedless tomato tints in hot in hot water. After after soaked seedless tomato, I have taken the grinding jar and I have grind them. After grinding, I have put the puree in one pan and add little little bit crushed jaggery and little bit black salt, 
salt, pepper powder, red chili powder, and roasted jeera powder, and little bit water. After cooking in one pan in medium flame for thirty to 50, uh, for fifteen to twenty minutes, you can decorate it with some bundis also in that also if you wish. For fourth item, I have making mashed potatoes, masala potatoes. I have taken boiled potatoes and I have removed the skin also potato skin and after removing the skin i have crushed uh, i have mashed them and after mashing i have add a little bit onions and little bit masalas like pepper powder black salt black salt salt red chili powder and after adding this mas uh, this masalas you have to mix them and after mixing you can decorate it you can decorate it your dish with some coriander leaves or mint leaf also and enjoy your day with some chup goodbye next up we will see how sabudana khichdi a maharashtrian cuisine will be made by manushri And uh, finally, we will see Avni making pita and demonstrating it to you guys. Hey guys, today I'll be showing you how to make an odia pita. So first, I have taken about one liter of water in a frying pan. I have turned on the heat, and I will let this water get hot. Okay. So now I have added one tej patta, and I have added a peeled inch of garlic. and um i have added these two in the water so that when the water gets hot it will absorb the taste of the tej patta and the ginger now i have added about 300 grams of jaggery or gourd i will slowly let this gourd melt into the water and combine with it i am here mixing it slowly so that it melts fast and combines with the water So till that time let me tell you something about this pitha. Pitha is a part of the Odia as well as Assamese and Bengali cuisine. So here we are making a Odia pitha and pitha can be sweet and savory both. Now the mixture of go uh, jaggery and water has started boiling. Uh, so after it starts boiling the next step is to add is to take out the tej patta and the ginger. till this time the taste of the ginger and tej patta is fully immersed in this mixture of jaggery and water next i will take about half kilo of atta or um, wheat flour and i will slowly scoop by scoop add it into the mixture by this time i have turned off the gas now after the full uh, wheat flour is added i will slowly mix it together so that it forms a dough like consistency now the mixture is the dough is all done and we will keep this aside to cool now in another pan i have added about 1 and 1/2 tablespoon of ghee and i will add i will let it melt first 
and then i will add about 7 to 8 tablespoons of sugar it really depends on your sweetness level how much of sugar you want to add i will wait for the sugar to melt now so that it can fully mix with the ghee i am making a sweet type of pita here which is also called um, a kakara now as you can see the sugar is slowly slowly starting to melt and mix with the ghee now the next step is to add about 100 grams of grated coconut grated and dry coconut this will be our filling for the uh, pita the filling which we will fill inside the dough which we made earlier now we will let this cook for a while and let the water of the coconut evaporate but it has after some time it will start turning golden brown and that is how we know that it is um, cooked our mixture is done and now here after some time we have cooled the cool the dough and the mixture and uh, on a clean platform i will sprinkle some dry flour so that the dough doesn't stick to the platform and we can easily roll it out now i will take a uh, some of i will take a part of the cooled dough and then i will um, flatten it out and shape it in kind of a puri shape and i will make a mold in between to add the filling here i am filling it with the um, filling with coconut filling which we made earlier i am taking another piece of dough and i am flattening it out so that it, i can cover this now after it is fully covered i will press the sides to make sure that the filling doesn't leak out i will keep this aside and i will make three or four more of it you can make as many as you want as you can see we have to put this in hot oil now the oil should be hot we need to let them fry for about 5 to 6 minutes so that the out, outside is crispy and brown golden brownish and the inside is also cooked fully so in the starting 2 3 minutes you can put, fry them on fry them on high flame but then towards the uh, towards the end 2 3 minutes you should lower the flame so that it cooks inside and doesn't burn outside now as you can see the pitas have turned golden brown over here that means they are fully cooked we'll take them out one by one and make sure that uh, the excess oil doesn't go with them and it drips back into the pan as you can see they are very they are looking very crispy on the outside and it is they are indeed very delicious to eat so please do try and make them Ma'am, yes, Sharvani. Ma'am, I've heard that Odisha has many unique styles of paintings. I would love to learn more about Patta Chitra paintings. Yes, ma'am. Could we learn more about the paintings of Maharashtra too? I have seen many paintings, but I never know how to distinguish them from each other. Yes, of yes. course. Students, would you all like to take a virtual tour of a museum to understand the paintings of Odisha? Yes, yes ma'am. Ma yes ma'am. Yes, yes ma'am. Ma yes ma'am. And let's have a look at it. Hey there. So you might be wondering where we are right now. Well, we are at a museum specially known for its Padachitra and Wali paintings. But what exactly are these types of paintings? Well, my friends here will give you a quick and brief insight on this topic. Let's see them. Hi, I'm Fernanda, and I, along with Adi, will give you a quick insight on Wali paintings. This is one Wali painting. As you can see, it consists of many geometrical shapes, like most Wali paintings. Besides geometrical shapes, they also contain rhythmic patterns. Wali paintings are actually a form of tribal art and are traditionally painted in Maharashtra. Its origin. Basic idea of Wali paintings here. Shreya and I will now give you a brief idea about the patachitras. The type of painting I'm pointing at right now is a patachitra. It is indeed a bit more intricate than the Varvi paintings you've seen before. Patachitra is a traditional painting of Odisha culture and is one of the oldest and the most popular forms of art in Odisha. With all that being said, now all of us would like you to give you one more elaborate insight on these two paintings, specifically so that you can get a clear picture of their similarities. and the princess as well as their own unique attributes 
The Varli painting tradition in Maharashtra are among the finest examples of the folk style of paintings. Varli painting is a tribal art mostly done by Adivasi from North Sayadri range in India. Varli is the name of the largest tribe found on the northern outskirts of Mumbai. Despite being in such close proximity to the largest metropolis in India, Varli tribesmen avoid all the influences of modern urbanization. The style of Varli painting was not recognized until the 1970s, even though the tribal style of art is thought to date back as early as the 10th century. These wall paintings use a set of basic geometric shapes, a circle, a triangle and a square. In today's time, Varli paintings on paper have become very popular and are now sold all over India. These shapes are symbolic of different elements of nature. The circle and the triangle come from their observation of nature. The circle represents the sun and the moon while the triangle depicts mountains and conical trees. In contrast, the square renders to be a human invention indicating a sacred enclosure. The most important aspect of the painting is that it does not depict fictional characters but depicts social life. Pictures of human beings and animals along with scenes from daily life are recreated in a loose rhythmic pattern. The central aspect of many paintings is the tarpa dance. The tarpa, a trumpet-like instrument, is played in turns by different men. Men and women intervene their hands and move in a circle around the tarpa player turning and moving as he turns, never turning their backs to the tarpa. The circle formation of these dancers are also said to resemble the circle of life. The Varli paintings are made on mud walls with white paste. This white paste is a mixture of rice paste and water with gum as a binding. They use a bamboo stick chewed at the end to make it as flexible as a paintbrush. The ritual paintings are usually created on the inside walls of village huts. The walls are made of a mixture of branches, earth and red brick that make a red ochre background for the paintings. Varli paintings are part of the Indian tradition of wall art. The medium has changed over the years. The paintings which were done on mud walls for decorating the homes of the Varli tribe are now also done on paper, cloth, fabrics and canvas. Patchitra paintings Patchitra is a traditional painting of Odisha. These paintings are based on Hindu mythology and are especially inspired by Jagannath and the Vaishnava sect. Since the beginning of Patchitra culture, Lord Jagannath, who is an incarnation of Lord Krishna, has been the major source of inspiration. The subject matter of Patchitra is mostly mythological, religious stories and folklore. The paintings Patchitra resemble the old mirrors of Odisha especially the religious centers of Puri, Konark and Bhubaneswar region, dating back to the 5th century BC. Before painting, the artists prepare the canvas or the patta by coating the cloth with a mixture of chalk and gum, the gum made of tamarind seeds. This gum gives the cloth tensile strength and a smooth surface allowing it to accept the paint. This makes the patta semi-absorbent. The mixture is then rubbed onto the cloth using two different stones. Finally, the cloth is dried. All colors used in the paintings are natural and paintings are made fully in the old traditional way by Chitrakaras, who are the Odia painters. The painters use vegetable and mineral colors without going for factory made poster colors. They prepare their own colors. The painter first starts by making the borders and then proceeds to sketch directly with the brush using light red and yellow. A floral border is a must in Patachitra paintings, and so is the use of natural colors, restricting them to a single tone. This creates a distinctive look which cannot be replicated in other types of paintings. The main flat colors are applied next, which is white, red, yellow, and black. The painter then finishes the painting with fine strokes of black color brushes, giving the effect of pen work. When the painting is complete, it is held over a charcoal fire. This makes the painting water resistant and durable besides giving it a shining finish. Palm leaf padachitra, also known as tala padachitra, is drawn on palm leaves. First, palm leaves are left for becoming hard and after being taken from the trees. Then, they are sewn together to form a canvas. The images are traced by using black or white ink. 
Often, palm leaf illustrations are more elaborate, obtained by superimposing layers that are glued together for most of the surface. One can open these layers like small windows to reveal a second image under the first layer. The most detailed and skilled patachitra work is found in and around Puri, especially in the village of Raghurajpur. Even today in Odisha, these two crafts are combined in one by rich colorful application, creative motifs and designs, and a portrayal of simple themes. Wow, ma'am, all those beautiful paintings reminded me that I visited Orisha when I was younger. I recall visiting many temples over there. Really? That's wonderful. Odisha does in fact have many beautiful tourist attractions. It's good that you brought it up since our next topic is art and architecture of Odisha. Let's watch a short video to understand it better. Hi, everyone. I hope everyone is safe. Oh, this chromo is late again. Okay, then till he arrives, I will introduce myself. I am Tecmo. I am a flying football robot said by many people, but you may call me anything. I am a future technology robot who is programmed to help and assist people. And one thing my friend Tecmo is a little annoying so ignore him. Here he came. Hi. What took you so long? Sorry, I got stuck in robot traffic. Oh hi, I am Chromo. I am a future technology robot who is programmed to help and assist people and also irritate Tecmo. Hahaha. <laughs> Chromo, did you know? I had been to a dish and I loved their art and architecture, and I loved it. Now a dish is art, and architecture is my most favorite compared to others in India. Oh that's good, but Maharashtra's art and architecture is much better than a dish's. Oh is it then let's check which is better through a video. Okay, I will play my video first. Oh really? Okay fine let's see. Sure. Okay, I will play my video first. Sure. The Canaxon Temple was built in the 13th century in the year 1250. It was built by King Narasimha Deva I, the king of the Eastern Ganga dynasty. The Sun Temple is about 35 kilometers northeast from the coastline of Odisha. The temple is dedicated to Lord Surya and the temple is a classic example of Kalinga architecture. The word Kanak is Gona or an angle and the Ark meaning the sun. During the 13th century, the Kanaksan temple consisted of a shikara, an Aran stump, Jagmohana, some horses, an entrance, and a sundial. One of the most fascinating parts of the temple is the wheel. There are a total of 24 wheels. Each side has a pair of two with the chariot's 12 pair of wheels corresponding to the 12 months of the Hindu calendar, each month paired into two cycles, Shukla and Krishna, and also is a sundial. This wheel not only attributes the sundial, but also attributes the oldest and ancient most book, which is Surya Siddhartha. This book is known for astronomy, astrology, and physics. This knowledge was revealed by Lord Surya. The seven horses are named after the seven sections of Sanskrit prosody Gayatri, Vrihati, Usin, Jagati, Trishudba, Anshudba, and Pankti. 
Sanskrit prosody or chandas refers to one of the six vendangas or limbs of Vedic studies. The Aran Stam is a major pillar dedicated to Sun Arana called the Arana Stamba, used to stand in front of the eastern stairs of the porch. The top part of the temple or the towering spire is also called as the Viman or Dual. It is also known as the Shikara. The Jagmohana is an entrance hall of the temple. The Sun Temple was made from three types of stone. Colorite was used for dull, lintel and frames as well as sculptures. Laterite was used for the core of the platform and staircases near the foundation. Condolite was used for other parts of the temple. Did you know this temple was also called the Black Pogoda by European sailor accounts as early as 1676? Brahmeshwar Temple Brahmeshwar Temple is a Hindu temple dedicated to Shiva located in Bhubaneswar, Odisha, erected at the end of 9th century CE. The Somavansi king, Udyata Kesari by his mother, Kolavati Devi, corresponds to 1058 CE. Architecture of Brahmeshwar Temple this style of architecture was used to depict the power and prosperity of the builders. The Jagmohana is famous for the lion head idols. The Vimahana of the temple is around 18.96 meter. The sandstone walls and the wooden structure of the interiors are worth mentioning. The temple also has eight guardian gods protecting the sanctuary. The exterior walls of the temple are adorned with several figures of God and Goddesses. Carvings of swan, deer and religious scenes, also carvings of Natraj. This temple is built using the method Panchayatna. The main shrine is surrounded by four subsidiary shrines at four different corners. Panchayatna also refers to a type of worship, Puja, performed by Marta Bhrimas. The Panchayatna Puja is marked by the simultaneous worship of five different deities Vishnu, Shiva, Surya, Ganesh and Goddesses. Rabiana Fort Rabiana Fort is a group of ancient forts in the Baleshwar district of Odisha. This fort has a complex structure and was considered the biggest medieval fort in eastern India. It was built during the regime of Eastern Ganga dynasty under the rulership of King Narsim Deva I. Apart from its fortified walls, it is also fenced by river flowing around it. This fort was built in medieval era with a military type of structure. It was believed that there were 161 fort goddesses which were called as the Durga Devata. The entire fort is built by red sandstones, mud, mud blocks, laterite stones bonded with limestone paste. The fort has also got deep ditches on the three side of its fortified wall. Oh, that was good. So do you accept that Adisha's architecture is better than any other? No, no, have a look at my video. Okay, fine. Trimbakeshwar Temple The ancient Hindu temple in the town of Trimbak in the Trimbakeshwar Temple in the Nasik district of Maharashtra, India. It is dedicated to the god Shiva and is one of the 12 Jyotirlingas. Did you know the origin of the sacred Godavari River is near Trimbak. Architecture of Trimbakeshwar Temple 
It is built in the 18th century. The Nagara style Trimbakeshwar temple is constructed in black stone, housing a spacious courtyard. The temple also has an elevated platform known as the Shikara, which has a stone plate carved in form of a lotus. Kalasha Pot on top of the sanctum sanctum of a Hindu temple represents the root of an inverted tree concept found in Upanishad. Amalaka, usually with ridges on the rim, that sits on the top of a Hindu temple's shikara or main tower. Shikara, it is a top part of Hindu temples. Uru shikara, it is a lower part of the carved tower. Mahamandapa. Is the pavilion constructed right in front of Guddha Mandapa of the temple, and it is always bigger in dimensions than those of the Guddha Mandapa. Arja Mandapa. It is an entrance porch forming a transitional area between the outside and the Mandapa of the temple. Garba Griya. The innermost sanctum of a Hindu and Jain temple, where resides the motion or icon. Of the primary deities of the temple. These are images of various deities, namely Ganga Devi, Joleshwara, Rameshwara, Gautameshwara, Kedarnath, Rama, Krishna, Parashurama, and Lakshmi Narayana. The temple has also several monasteries and samudras of saints. Oh, that was nice I accept that Maharashtra's architecture and Adisha's are both very beautiful and nice. The architecture of each state are beautiful and they should not be compared. Because each state has its own beauty. So true. Thanks for watching with us hope you all loved the video. Teacher, till now we have seen about the art, cuisine and paintings of Odisha and Maharashtra. Also, I have heard that Odisha and Maharashtra both have beautiful dances. Ma'am, could you tell us more about the dances? Yes, Pandan. Surely the dances of both the states are charming. So let us see last year's concert on the dance of Maharashtra and Odisha. Good morning, one and all present here. My name is Maitri and I study in class 9th. Today, me and my peers will be putting on a display of two Indian dances. The first shows the cultures of Odisha and the second shows the cultures of Maharashtra. Starting with Odisha, we have Sambalpuri folk dance. The Sambalpuri folk, folk, folk dance which are 
owns its origin from the western part of Odisha, particularly east wide Sambalpur district of Odisha. This place is known for the Odissi dance form, deriving its name from the presiding deity Sambali. Sambalpur has distinct cultural identity of its own. Let's take a look. Wow, what beautiful dance steps and elegant movements. That was seriously a lovely performance. Of course, you will feel nothing less suspended when you see our next dance, which is a local dance of Maharashtra called Lavani. The word Lavani is derived from the word Lavanya, meaning beautiful, and it is one of the most popular dance forms of Maharashtra. Lavani is a combination of traditional song and dance, which particularly is, for, is performed to the beats of the Dolak. Uh, Lavani has contributed to the development of the Marathi folk theater greatly. Let's take a look at it. to charming and graceful dances. We really got to see the rich cultures and traditions of these two alluring states, Odisha and Maharash. What do you think, Priyanka? Yeah, I really enjoyed the performances. The costume in the Sambalpuri dance was really good. Can you tell us more about it, Shavari? Yes, sure. Sambalpuri saris are known for the incorporation of traditional motifs like shank, chakra, pool, all of which have deep symbolism with the native Odia color red and black. What about you, Priyanka? Do you know anything about the costume in Lavni dance? Yes, the dress they wore in the Lavni dance was not called uh, Novari. It is the most common form of clothing traditionally worn by Maharashtrian women. And the word Novari means the nine yards, which signifies the length of the fabric. Its pattern of draping is actually similar to that of, uh, of the dhoti worn by men. Hence why it is also known as the dhoti sari. Wow, that was wonderful. Thank you both for sharing your insight. My name is Maitri. My name is Sharvari. My name is Priyanka and we are from class 9A and we hope you enjoyed our program. Thank you. Bunga, 
really beautiful so students what did you all understand by these videos i showed to you all well ma'am i learned many new things about odisha's culture that i didn't know about before yes there's a lot of diversity between the cultures of maharashtra and odisha which was very nicely depicted in the video both states have beautiful art forms yes ma'am and i was try and i was dying to try some of those delicious foods I am very glad that you all have enjoyed our Odisha Day celebration. Well, the class is ending soon. I'll see you all tomorrow. Bye. Have a good day. Bye, ma'am. Bye, ma'am. Bye, ma'am. Bye, ma'am.